Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 74 of the J Situation podcast. I'm recording this on August 10th, 2021. How you folks doing? Man, I'm doing pretty good. Oh my goodness gracious, Knight's Armament URX4 on the upper. Installed. Optics inbound. Worth it? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> we'll, talk, we'll talk about that on today's episode. A lot to cover on today's episode, actually. And definitely going to talk about silencers. Going to do some deep dives, as it were. Silencers, you say? Yes, friend. Silencers. Like the ones you can purchase from Silencer Shop. <laughs> the J Situation podcast is proudly sponsored by Silencer Shop, the most efficient and intelligent way to purchase silencers. It is. They have innovated. They are quite innovative, that company. And they've done a lot of cool stuff, like create an easy system that minimizes the likelihood of errors in your paperwork. They pioneered the use of the QR code on the actual Form 4 so the ATF can scan the code instead of inputting all your data themselves by hand. You know, those, those ATF folks, they try as they may, they, they, they make mistakes. So, yeah, they, it turns out they're human. Humans are lizard people. I, I'm not sure which. Either way, they, you know, I think lizards make mistakes too. Um, but yeah, that's why Silencer Shop has grown. They continue to innovate. They have a network of dealers nationwide where silences are legal. You can use their kiosk, uh, do your fingerprints and photos electronically, you cut down on paperwork errors, you simplify your silencer purchasing process, you get a money back guarantee, no transfer fees, no paperwork errors, just you and your silencer with no drama. It truly is silencer ownership simplified. It is. And secondly, and most importantly, this podcast is sponsored by Pew Science. Pushing the silencer industry forward one test at a time. I am the owner and technical director of Pew Science. It is my company, and I sponsor this podcast. I choose to sponsor this podcast because uh, I use this podcast to communicate data deliverables to the populace. <laughs> Look, it works. Okay, just relax. Everything's going to be fine. Just, just sit back. And I'll tell you about silencers. <laughs> Visit PewScience.com for the suppression rating. The simplest and most accurate hearing safe ratings for your suppressed small arms. All the ratings on PewScience.com are based on true human sound perception. That's what the suppression rating is. Okay, it's in section 5 of the silencer sound standard. The standard walks you through gunshot noise, sort of like Wikipedia, but let's be honest, it's more interesting. Because it's about science or sound. <laughs> there are seven parts. They're all on PewScience.com for you to read. Um, yeah, I know it's a lot. And, and if for some reason you, you feel overwhelmed, that's totally fine. That's acceptable. Uh, just skip to Section 5 there. And the suppression rating is there in Section 5 for you to understand. It lets you know how silencers stack up in comparison to one another with regard to sound at the muzzle and at the shooter's ear. And it gives you a hearing safe dose limit for the particular platforms on which the silencers are tested. It's directly tied to human perception. If, the, if it's a higher number, it sounds better. If it's lower, it sounds louder. It's all color-coded there for you. That's all there is to it. Pretty, I try to make it pretty simple for you, okay? You're not going to find this information anywhere else in the world. And in Section 6 of the standard, we have all the reviews. Uh, pretty detailed. You can go check them out on the website. And if you don't want to look at them because they're too detailed, that's fine. I got you, fam. Go to Section 7, Simple Database Tool for you to sort and view the suppression, suppression ratings of all the publicly released test data. Yeah. Then you, you look at the table there, you say, man, that looks really quiet. I wonder, how, I wonder why that's quiet. Well, you click on the link there in the table to the review, and you can drill down to your heart's content. You can. You are free to do so. Yeah. And, you know, if you're, for, exa you know, for example, maybe you're a manufacturer, maybe, maybe you make silencers. You know, and you say, you know, I would also like to know about my silencer in this way. Pew Science, will you test my silencer? Yes, friend, I will. And uh, if you're interested in that type of private testing and consulting services, there's a form on the website with which you can submit that inquiry. There is. You can find it on the website there. And uh, your contact information, all the test data we generate, uh, uh, you know, in result of an effort that 
you fund? Well, that's all held in strict confidence. Unless, of course, you want to release it to the public, in which case Pew Science can help you do that. And you know what? You're in luck, because today we're going to be talking about um, two such efforts that were released to the public by the owner of the data. Yeah, that's uh, one of the topics on today's podcast, so stick around. We'll uh, talk to you about that. So that's a good. This is a good example today of uh, what I, I, you know, I speak about this in the intro every time, and I'm not sure how many people listen to it, but um, this is an example of what I tell you every single episode. <laughs> and you can support this podcast. You can support Pew Science. You know, you can support all of the testing that Pew Science does by joining with a membership at pewscience.com. And you know, if you can't join, that's fine. You know, it's you, you, you give what you can when you can. And I tell you what, if you can't join, just spreading the word is great. And also, you know, rating the podcast, you know, uh, giving a good review there on your podcast provider can also help the information spread. So that's greatly appreciated if you have time to do that. If not, that's fine too. <laughs> the point is, guys, we want to let folks know. You know, in these podcast providers, we just want to let folks know, the general public, that silencers and guns are awesome. We want to normalize the use of suppressed small arms. That is that is the overarching goal. Okay. I have four topics for you today. Topic one, Sound Signature Review 648, the Otter Creek Labs PR30L on Supersonic 308. Yeah. Topic two, Sound Signature Review 649. Another one, <laughs> Otter Creek Labs PR30S on Supersonic 308. Yeah, it's the short version of that silencer. We'll dig into that review too. That's going to be two technical discussions for you. Topic three, the Knight's Armament URX4. Yeah. Yeah, so fun to install. Yeah, it's so fun. <laughs> I'll tell you a story about that. Maybe I'll give you a little bit of pointers if you're looking to install one of your own. And then topic four. Thank you to all of the uh, Pew Science members for your support. It's it's it, it does mean the world. And welcome to all the new Pew Science members too. The consumers, the manufacturers, the dealers. Shout out to Blake Madigan. Uh, he's an SOT out of Fort Worth, the Fort Worth area. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Blake, for your support. And also, I would like to 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 give a shout out to Bowie Outfitters down in Louisiana, and Mississippi. There, yeah, Gulf Coast gigantic outdoor dealer there outdoor shop outdoor store bowie outfitters they join pew science so we'll talk about that all right pleased to have those folks support okay we're gonna move into topic one at a time of eight minutes in three seconds all right okay sound signature review 648 otter creek labs pr 30 l on supersonic 308 Guys, we are dangerously close to 50 reviews. What will be the 50th? I'll do something cool for you for the 50th. I think I will. Yeah. So this one, though, 648 Otter Creek Labs PR30L. What in tarnation? Otter Creek Labs? Who are they? <laughs> you know, uh, it's another contracted test series from Pew Science. Uh, these are so cool. Because you get to see paid R and D, you know, like publicly, it's in, it's insane, really. This, this was sort of a special case because this contract actually called for direct website publication immediately. That was the contract that we did, and and you you guys actually saw the data at the same time <laughs> as Otter Creek Labs, if you can believe it. I mean, that's really what happened um i i well you know now i i let them know what the suppression rating of the silencer was like ahead of time like i called on the phone you know but like so so they had the bottom line they had a, the bottom line for sound which is what the suppression rating is but and i let them know a little bit other details but other than that like the actual raw data like that wasn't act that wasn't seen by anyone but me before like anybody 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 like nobody saw it except for me before you saw it yeah so this is literally the closest anyone in the world other than me is going to get to a direct r&d deliverable for a silencer and it's public 
like and members see all the data. So like Audrey Otter Creek Labs, they're, they're not a member of P-Science. Like, I don't know if you know that, but they're not. So I sent them a copy of the member review. I was straight up went to the <laughs> went to the member review and PDF'd it for them. Because they're, they're, they didn't want to report. They're like, no, we just, want, we just want it on your website, dude. Like, we just want you to show everyone our science. We, we don't care. We just, I'm like, all right, I do that. So we did. I can totally do that. Not everyone is looking to do the same thing. Sometimes, you know, folks that are doing contracting with us, they want a test report because they need to keep it for their records. They need, you know, they need to send it to different parties for solicitation, you know, different military customers, different buyers, vendors. Some people just want website article. It's totally fine. It's their paying for a service for 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 testing like whatever deliverable they would like that deliverable will be will be done so that's what we did so yeah so there you go brand new brand new manufacturer who actually came from the form one community doing various things which is kind of interesting um the owner's name is andrew he's a nice guy and he works uh, pretty dang hard he, he, t- he took the leap of faith and made a silencer business which uh i don't know man it's crazy to me like it's cool right like starting your own business is really intimidating and terrifying i can tell you that from personal experience and so uh it's cool and so what is also cool is that he trusted pew science to test the silencers um, and show the data to the world and he knew his silencers were good but he also knew that without pew science third-party verification um you know, it was he, he, he was he was going to have less less credibility. I mean, he's a brand new manufacturer. It's like you know, new manufacturers come around all the time, and he recognized that Pew Science has created a proving ground for science or performance in the United States. Like that's kind of it, you know, if your if you if your sponsors aren't being tested by Pew Science, the the data isn't really taken seriously anymore. And so here we are. That's what we've done, and that's what we're doing. So let's get into it. Let's, let's talk about it. So this is the PR-30L. Yeah. Precision Rifle 30 L version. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. These are not, and believe me, guys, these are not notes from someone. This is me. <laughs> this is me speaking <laughs> my suppositions, okay? I'll let you know if the information comes from Otter Creek. But other than that, it's all from me. Um, okay, so it's a full-size silencer. Um. It's meant to suppress cartridges of 30 caliber and below. Okay, like like most of these most of these popular rifle silencers, right? It's about a pound. Weighs about a pound with the direct thread mount that comes with it, um, and you can use any direct thread mount or any. I'm sorry, any one of those universal rear mounts with it or whatever. It comes with a direct thread, um, just heat treated steel direct thread mount. So with that, it weighs about a pound. Uh, not too shabby, not too heavy. Uh, about eight and three quarter inches long, roughly, with their mount. Uh, and you could probably reduce that length the smaller direct thread mount like you could put like a dead air nomad direct thread mount in the back you know or something like that the silencer is about 1.625 inch diameter so it's bigger than the the one and a half inch silencers you know like a lot of the the kind of the old more old school popular rifle silencers but it's smaller than the one and three quarter inch like the 1.75 inch stuff right like the hyperion and the nomad and excuse me like the what else oh like the q stuff so it's smaller than that okay um and i believe if i remember correctly i i want to say that they did that to be able to fit under some hand guards for some people i can't remember that could have been another manufacturer i sometimes i get them mixed up but regardless it's it's 1.6 inch diameter instead of 1.75 you know what i mean okay so as far as size goes it's shorter than an ultra 9 like a thunder beast ultra 9 it's shorter than a hyperion okay but it hangs in sound it does it does hang it does and that my friends is a big deal it is it's it's it, it's a really big deal and the bottom line up front the bottom line up front here on the on the 308 20 inch bolt action 
46.4 composite rating. Okay, so this is Sound Signature Review 648 on the website if you want to follow along at home. Um, I just realized I didn't tell you that I was going to step through this review here. So yeah, it's 648 on the website, 6.48. So the composite rating is 46.4 there at the top of the page, man. That's 45.9 at the ear, ladies and gentlemen. 45.9 at the ear. That, my friend, sounds good. Yeah. It does. If you're solidly in the 40 zone at the ear on a supersonic rifle cartridge on a 20-inch barrel, you're doing well, my friends. You're doing well. Okay, that just as a peg point for you, if you're new to this, like that's that's gonna sound good to most people. Um 33.8 at the muzzle, that's good. Like that's really good, guys. It really is. I mean, it it's really good. Uh, so how, how how is the silencer doing this? Okay, like how how is it performing like this? What is making this silencer quiet? How is it able to suppress to levels like this? Okay, if you take a look at the ranking section and and if you take a look at the figure seven in, in the review on the website, you, you're gonna see that this silencer is beating the Ultra Nine from Thunder Beast. Okay. Now it's uh, let me uh, let me go to the I'm gonna, let me do it right now just in real time so we can talk let's, let's speak intelligently about it okay okay all right rankings I'm gonna go to the section seven Pew science rankings I'm gonna go to uh, weapons sys no I'm gonna go to ammo that's the easiest fastest supersonic three away only boom okay I'm gonna sort by overall composite rating descending okay so the Hyperion's at the top and then you got the Otter Creek, and then you got the Thunder Beast. So they're about, okay, so 0.3 different overall. That's very, for all intents and purposes, the same rating. I mean, really similar rating. Now, when you look at the suppression rating at the ear, it's it's dead on. It's the same. 45.9 ear. Okay, so to the shooter, it's going gonna, it's gonna to basically sound the same to you. Now, the Otter Creek is a little bit quieter at the muzzle, and that's in that part of the sound field. So... I mean, is an observer going to be able to tell the difference? Maybe a little bit. Maybe. Um, and in fact, even a the shooter might be able to tell the difference as well in t in type of sound. But in, in overall loudness and effect on your ear, it's going to be dead nuts almost the same, dude. Like, frankly, it's, it's not going to be that much of a difference to the shooter as far as intensity goes. Okay, now, now as far as what, what's pleasing to your ear, well... There, there, there does become some proclivities that certain people have for sound, especially with, with pre-existing hearing damage. So I will be doing a kind of a deep dive article on some of these really quiet silencers for comparison and for, for Pew Science members to understand. If you really, really want to know like some like, like tone stuff, for example. Um, but I can tell you right now that this thing is, this thing is quieter than Ultra 9. As quiet or quieter, okay? Like, the, the, it's it's Ultra 9 level, which is wild, dude. It's wild. It really is. It's crazy. Um, and, I mean, I guess if you look at, like, if you look at the figure 7 in the review, you could say, yeah, one's like 45.87, 45.93 at the year. Don't get hung up on that, okay? That's mathematical. That's not... Well, when stuff gets that close, you need to just relax. <laughs> okay, it's and it's really not that that big a deal. They're they're for all intents and purposes, they're going to sound sound equally loud to the shooter. Now, it, it's extreme that this silencer is able to do that. Okay, it is it is extreme, and before we even talk about why. I want to highlight something really important, okay? Before you even look at any of the numbers, okay? The suppression rating, the the like the first round pop, the the peak DB, the impulse, anything, anything. Take a look at figure 1. We're going to start off a little bit differently this time. I want you to look at figure 1. And I want you to squint. 
Don't even read the text. Just look at figure one. And don't, don't, don't read the text. Just lay, let your eyes go blurry on it. Just stare past it, okay? And, and look at the waveform. Let Just look at those squiggles. Look at the waveform. You see it? Okay. What do you see? You see nothing happening first, right? We're, we're going we're gonna to read it left to right like a book in English. Okay, we're going to, time is starting from the left. We're going to go left to right. What do you see? You see nothing. Okay, then you see some wiggles. Yeah, then you see a spike, right? A big spike. Then what? Then what happens? Not a lot. It gets quiet again. Yeah. Then stuff happens later. Okay. That's all. That's all I wanted you to do. I just wanted you to look at the look at the squiggles. Look at the curve. Look at the waveform. So that qualitative, flowery, vague sequence of events I have just described to you in that figure is the signature of a really quiet supersonic rifle silencer on a bolt action at the muzzle. Qualitatively, I, I have described to you that. Now, now, what does that mean? Well, the silencer lets the bullet out, but then everything else stays in the silencer until it doesn't. And that's a quiet silencer. Okay, It's a gas trap. Traps gas. That's how it's quiet. That's what makes silencers quiet, trapping gas. Okay, got it? <laughs> okay, cool. Cool. So we're. I just want to start off with this. I want to. I want you to understand this. You're no good to me if you if you don't listen, and you're no good to me if you don't understand what I'm telling you. So I, I need you to understand. Silencers trap gas. Okay, it's very important principle. Okay, cool. So that's the basic premise. So now let's get more complicated. Okay, okay. So how do you trap gas? When the gas is really high pressure and high velocity. How do you do that? How do you do that? What happens when the gas is moving so fast and it's such high pressure that it pressurizes the vessel relatively quickly with respect to the travel time through the vessel? Does that make sense? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Like if you, if you shot a jet of gas into a vessel and it, and it pressurized the entire vessel so quick relative to the time it took for that gas to go from one end of the, end of the vessel to the other end of the vessel. What, what, how, do you, how do you trap it? How do you trap it? Well, you have to perform what I call flow triage. Okay, that's right. Picture this. You're in a, you're in a crowded movie theater. Crowded movie theater. You've heard me use the movie theater example before. I'm going to use it a little differently now. I remember when I talked to you about um, air molecules and I talked to you about subsonic versus superso supersonic and subsonic. I was tapping the guy on the shoulder and he was tapping the guy on the, in, on the shoulder in front of him and we were all communicating at the speed of sound in the medium. So we could we could let them know, oh, the, mo the molecule, and we're all piling up in front of each other in the movie theater trying to get out. We're piling up. That's what a pressure wave, a pressure wave forms because you pile up the bullet, the bullet has air piling up in front of it. That's a pressure wave. That's why you saw the little, that little hump in the unsuppressed twenty-two subsonic, and why you didn't see just a, a shock right away. Yeah, because you know if you have a shock, what happens? Well, let's see. You're in a crowded movie theater, okay, and you're going really fast, really fast. You're blowing past everybody when the fire alarm is pulled. Someone pulled a fire alarm. You're like, I got to get out of here supersonically fast real fast high pressure and you're going you, you're going to buy people so fast you've created discontinuity you're going to buy them so fast you're crushing their bones and their bodies and they're they're slamming into the walls you decide to go down that little hallway between you know the stadium seating and the and the wall to go out of the theater, you know, have to double back sometimes, go that little slope, you know, after you're done with the movie or you go into the bathroom, you go, you go out and you go down the little ramp and you, you want to go, it's a little hallway, like, you know, in the movie theater there, you're, you're, you're going through there. But the, the hallway is packed with people and the movie just ended. Yeah. And these people are taking their time. They're like, hmm, hmm, hmm. what a great movie. They're taking their time. Well, you're going so fast. You're the, the, all the people, they're literally splattering 
against the walls as you hit them and their gross mess is getting in the way like you're like you keep hitting these people and it's just like a soup of people now of he it's a human soup it's like gross i know this analogy is gross but trust me stick with me but it's getting in the way so much that you just start to slide through the slime and before you know it you're skipping through that hallway you're it's like a slip and slide you're you're slipping you're going you're going so fast you didn't even think you'd go that fast you're going that through that through that hallway so fast you would have gone slower but you didn't need to. Now, now, what if someone had opened little janitor's closets and people stopped getting run over and splattered and they just emptied out into the closets? And maybe you stopped to peek in too because, hey, everyone else was looking in the closets. Oh, the closets are nice. What could be, what could be in there? I don't know. It could be something cool. I don't know. Maybe there's candy in there. I don't know. What if you went in the closets, you peeked in, and you know what? Someone opened those closets, and you didn't have to splatter all the people. Maybe they all just went into the closets, and they, you know, people were just going in the closet. People were just going out to the sides. Maybe there was more room. Maybe there was more room in in the hallway there. Nobody was bleeding. Y'all just you could all still get out. You were just funneling into the closets and the nooks and crannies and everything was fine. No guts, no, no guts explosion over the walls. You would get out of the theater slower. You would. And you'd get out in one piece eventually. But you would have taken a tour. Okay, you would have had a little bit of a detour. And uh you you would probably see more of that hallway. Okay, what I've just described to you is an Omega Baffle. I've just described to you an Omega Baffle. That's a Hyperion. That's a Nomad. Okay, that's called coaxial design. Closets in the movie theater hallway preventing moviegoers from becoming Splatterhouse 5 and lubricating the hallways with their guts, dude. That's what it is. That's what this is. Pressure stagnation. The guts. You can just relieve pressure slightly and let it build and relieve it and let it build. You trap more of it. That's all that is, dude. You're just trapping more gas. If you splatter if you splatter those people all over the place in there, you're just going to slide right through them. You're going to create what's called um you're going to you're going to slide over pockets of blood and guts. You're going to slide over air, pressurized air. And you're going to sh- form a jet that just funnels through your silencer because because you've stagnated the interstitial space with pressure. That's what happens when you don't relieve it in supersonic in, in high pressure in high pressure supersonic flow. So so that's why. Silencers like this exist. The PR30L uses Omega baffles. Okay, now they're not exactly the same as the patent, as the Omega patent, but the premise is the same. The premise is the same. And actually, if I could call the Otter Creek baffle something official, if I could, I would call it an Omega Nomad hybrid. It's a broad step cone that is ported circumferentially and the, the outer skirt is angled it shapes the flow a little bit as it enters the outer annulus outside each baffle the janitor closets in the otter creek silencer are, are like those little rooms under the stairs you know keep with me keep with the movie theater analogy for a second you go in those closets right you know sometimes you go into rooms under the stairs and the and the ceiling is angled weird and you're like, whoa, you kind of like got a duck unexpectedly? To, just to keep with our analogy here, <laughs> the janitor closets on the Otter Creek look a little skewed inside. And boy, howdy, there are tons of them in every baffle, tons of doors to the closet. Tons, a lot of porting. They port it a lot, all around. You can, you can, leave, that, you can leave that baffle anytime you want through a side door. All right, now, what does that do? What does that do? Well, pressure stagnation is not a problem for the PR30L. In fact, 
No, in fact, it doesn't care much about pressure, stag pressure stagnation at all. I am willing to bet, actually, if you made this silencer 1.75 inch diameter, you could actually make it quieter possibly due to all the porting. At some point, you got to ask yourself, do we, do we connect the chambers like the Hyperion is? See what I mean, Jelly Bean? I mean, that's really what a Hyperion is when you think about it, right? I mean, it's more complicated than that, but continuous at our annulus. You see, you see, you, I hope you're understanding this more now. Like, this is not, there, this isn't voodoo necessarily. There is a method to the madness. Now, is this for sure? Like, it, when I say, oh, let's make it bigger, it's going to be quieter. Is that for sure? Will that work? I don't know. Could I be wrong? Yeah, you, you bet your ass could be wrong. <laughs> I could totally be wrong. But the PR30L uses what I call brute force method of sound suppression. You know, look, coming from the Form 1 community, it makes sense, dude. This dude that designed this, um, or their team, I'm pretty sure he has an engineer working for him. Um, it, is it highly refined? In a way, it is. Just based on based on empirical data and experimental refinement. It's highly refined in that way. In some ways, it's not. But I can tell you right now, it works. It does. Now, one consequence of this design to me, and I still have to perform more analysis on this, so bear with me, okay? I'm not done with it. I'm not. It's the dang tone. This sensor sounds deep. It has a deep tone. It does. Now, the suppression rating is what it is, but I have a sneaking suspicion there are some co components in the signature that are driving that. I think so. So I don't want to put the cart before the horse, but I am interested to take a closer look at the signatures. Okay, I haven't done, I haven't had a chance uh, yet, but I will. So that that's coming. I need to do this. Uh, it's important. Um, I know a lot of you are waiting a lot of other data, but there's some, some things I have to do for completeness and to really understand everything. We, we have to be thorough or we lose the pedigree now so if you want to look closer at the numbers take a look at the bullet exit event which is around 141 db right consistently consistently and the frp that actually occurs later in time okay so i'm telling you the silencer behaves like an ultra 9 or hyperion it does it's not the same but it's similar in behavior okay so say it with me folks say it with me you need the actual waveform to analyze the silencer. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, this review shows that if you only look at the peak sound pressure, you are flying blind, completely blind. Seriously, if someone else tests the silencer, I want you to tell me what they're, what they're telling you. If someone else shoots the silencer and tests it on, I don't care, pick a system. Uh, knock me over the head and steal PewSoft. And just show them a peak. And, and tell me, where is the peak? Tell me where the peak is. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> tell me where the peak is. Tell me. Wh tell me where the peak is. The, you can't tell me unless you look at the whole waveform. And, and what are you talking about, one peak? One peak out of millions? Come on, guys. Come on. So, yeah. You're flying blind unless you look at the full waveform. And I started this off by telling you what you're looking at. You don't even need to look at the numbers to see that it's a quiet silencer. I'm telling you by the shape of the waveform. How do you like them apples? Who else is doing that, guys? Who else is doing that? Who else is looking at a, a plot? Put the plot there. Take the numbers off it. I can tell you if it's quiet. Who else is doing that? Nobody. Nobody. All right? Look, I have it on good authority that Otter Creek Labs was told by a dealer that they wouldn't carry their silencer because it didn't meter well on their system. I, you, I don't even have to say who it is. Okay, it doesn't matter. Whatever system they use, it doesn't matter. Because the dealer who told them that obviously didn't know what they were doing when they tested it. Did they listen to it? Did they shoot an Ultra 9 next to it? 
They care of the Ultra 9. They sell that one. Well, they don't want to sell this one. Interesting. What's that meme with the girl from the kids show and she looks at the computer and she has a drink in her hand? She's like, interesting. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was interesting. It it, it, gr- it grinds my gears, frankly, and that's why I'm mentioning it. It's a shame because this thing's quiet, dude. Seriously, the waveforms show it's quiet. You don't even have to look at the peaks. Just look at the shape of the dang curve in figure one. If you understand silencers, which you do now because you've been listening to the podcast, you know the silencer's quiet. Okay? Okay. But I'm going to simmer down. Okay. Can we take a quick, let's, you know what? Actually, actually, yeah. Can we take a quick detour right now for me to brag about this data though? Yeah. Look at figure 2A right now. Figure 2A, ridiculous, fam. Ridiculous. Look at the smoothness of that bullet exit event. All five of them in that plot. Damn, son. And then look at how shots four through five go into rare faction a little faster than shot one. Oh, you bet you, bet you, you didn't think I was going to talk about that. That's right. Is that not crazy? Is that not crazy? You can see that. You know why that is? First round pop precursor flow from the end cap coupled with the bullet exit in the first shot. That's right. That waveform artifact and the fact that you can see it if you know what you're looking at, that should give you such high confidence in this data that you, that you shut the book on other silencer testing. It's that good. It's that good. You, you don't always get data this good. Even for me, that's how good the data is. This should scare people. That's how good it is. It's scary good. It's not even Halloween. It's not even Halloween yet. Now, the impulse is a little wild, I will say. Now, and in fact, the data is so good. uh, The uh, the data is so good. It lets us gather some interesting tidbits about the silencer. It does. Now, notice how the impulse waveforms are a little erratic in late time. Okay. You see that? Yeah. Figure four. Yeah. Well, there's two reasons for that. (laughs) frankly uh first reason is that the silencer is really quiet so they look more erratic than they normally would due to axis scaling i i think i i could have i could have actually made that the the scale in the axis bigger so it would have looked different to you like if you looked at the ultra 9 review for example like i think i used a different axis scale so it might look compressed it's all about data presentation sometimes and and like looking at the different amplitudes so that was that's the first reason why you see a little bit of that um the second reason, I think, is because of the porting in the silencer. Now, the silencer is ported it pretty aggressively, and I have a feeling that that's part of it. Now, the wild part about that, the wild part about it, and this is this is a really interesting thing, is that to the human ear, it's not really, you can't tell. You can't really tell. that The, the human ear can't tell according to my modeling, and when I was shooting, I really couldn't tell either. Like I could, I I could hear some first round pop, just and and first round pop on a supersonic, uh, system like this is not a first round pop like you hear on like a subsonic three hundred blackout. It's a different type of because there's other late time effects that trick you, but yeah, you can hit you can tell a difference in the first shot. The 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 inner ear modeling show it. The 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 waveforms show it too. Um, it's not bad. It's, it's really not bad at all, but you can hear it. Um, and these guys did a good job. The data shows they did. It does. That's really cool. Yeah. And so, you know, members actually, members see the data at the shooter's ear. Same story, really. One thing that members need to look at is the telltale sign of a really quiet rifle silencer at the ear. Just in the wave shapes, guys. Just like I told you to look at figure one, look at you guys, look at that. Look at what is it, figure in the member review here. Let me scroll down one second. Oh, yeah, figure six for, for members. The free version doesn't have figure six in it, or does it? No, it doesn't. Um, yeah. So look at figure six, and, and that's something that the, you members will see. Um, the impulse peaks after the initial weapon combustion remain low. That's how you know it's quiet. That's how you know it's quiet. When you see something like that, like that, you're like, oh dang. Because look at the Y, like the Y, the the vertical axis. That's one of those things where I probably should have scaled it a little bit different, but I wanted to show a lot of detail. Isn't that wild? I feel like that's so wild. 
how quiet that is. So yeah. Yeah, so all in all, quiet silencer. Fit and finish seems, honestly, feels good in the hand. Uh, pretty smooth. I like that. I like when silencers are just like smooth tubes that are black and feel nice. Uh, that didn't come out right. <laughs> it's not too heavy. Um, oh, you know what? It has a symmetrical blast baffle. Um, oh, all the baffles are double clipped. You form one, guys, that... Uh, well, for, for you non-form one guys, um, so you know those notches that appear in baffles? Uh, these ha the, 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 This silencer baffle design has two, two notches opposing each other, 180 degrees, in every baffle except for the, um, the blast baffle. I'm looking through it right now to see if the last one has it. I can't remember. I want to say the last baffle is clipped. Yeah, I think it is. I don't have my the borescope on my table right now, but uh, but yeah, and I I mean Andrew gave me some drawings of it too, some internal drawings, but but yeah, and one thing is interesting, he has these little, um, he does have little features on the end of it on the end cap there. I think thought that was cool, but yeah, it's pretty simple. It's uh it's not tubeless. Um, this silencer is a welded stack inside a tube. So um, that's just something to know. I'm pretty sure they have some other stuff in the works too. So if you're really into tubeless stuff for some reason, um, pretty sure they're doing that. But yeah, um, yeah, it's I don't know. It's not it's not too heavy. It's made of titanium, titanium tube and baffles. Uh, it's quiet, works well. Yeah, man. I don't know. Uh, you know, Otter Creek Labs, they're they are run by precision rifle shooters, so I'm hoping they did accuracy testing. I'm sure they did, which I, you know, I think they did. <laughs> I think actually Andrew shoots, shoots the silencer in matches and stuff. So, if I mean, I don't know. If you're looking for a centerfire precision rifle silencer, check out the PR30L. I think, I don't know. Data's on the website. Um, yeah. And if you don't like it or you think maybe you want something else, that's cool, cool too, man. I don't care. Like, I don't care what you buy at all. Remember that. I do not care what you buy. I do not. Literally, not in the least. Okay? Like, I, I don't know. Throw it in the trash. Don't care. All right. Let's move on to the second topic. <laughs> Hope I did that justice. Um, topic two uh, at a time of 42 minutes. 39 seconds. Okay. Topic two. Sound Signatures Review 649. Yeah, another one. Yeah, this is <laughs> Otter Creek Labs PR30S on Supersonic 308. Okay, so this is the same thing, really. I mean, let me, I'm going to click on the review so I have it up, up when I talk about it here. Yeah, okay. So this is the same story, guys. It really is, except this time it's the S version. Okay, the PR30S. Okay, and the reason I released two articles on the same day is because this was contracted work and I thought it would be appropriate. And he was like, yeah, I want them both. I was like, all right, well, let's do them all both at once. It's fine. Who needs sleep? I don't need sleep. So since <laughs> since almost none of you even knew about the silencers, it seemed prudent to show both of them to you. I thought it was a good idea. I did. So yeah, in the name of efficiency, this is basically just a shorter version of the L. Okay, like I'm not going to go through every little detail. You can read the reviews on PSonics.com. Um, this is just a shorter version. Now, the only, literally, the only differences in this these two silencers are the number of baffles and actually the bore size. And that's something you you're not going to know from the review. Um, the bore, or maybe I did put it in there. I can't remember. Um, but the bore size is different. I think the L. I want to say it's 0.375. I want to say that's the bore size on the S. I think it's 0.395, so I think it's two hundredths bigger. I want to say you're two, you're two, um, you're two hundredths bigger on the S on the shorter one. And don't quote me on that, but I think that's I think that's right. Um, and I, I think if you're curious, Otter Creek Labs, you can contact them now. So you go, you go like 1.8, 1.9, like almost, almost two inches shorter with the S version. Okay. And you go 3.2 ounces lighter. Okay. So almost a quarter pound lighter, almost a quarter pound lighter. 
um, but not quite. So yeah. So what does that? So what does that get you? You're making it. You're making it smaller and lighter. You know, sh- shorter and lighter. What does that get you? What does that get you in performance? Well, the suppression rating drops. <laughs> of course. If you're new to silencers, uh, you can't get something for nothing. So you make it smaller if the same design. It, if it's the same, now, it doesn't mean that small silencers are loud. It just means if you have the exact same design and you make it smaller, it's usually louder. Okay, all other things equal. That's the reality. You're not trapping as much gas. Remember our analogy of the movie theater earlier? You're not trapping as much gas. And, hey, by the way, the reason that analogy worked so well is because... I was trying to like I know it was I know it was violent and grotesque but what I was trying to illustrate was like the sliding because if you if you're packed with guts in the hallway and you're sliding through it that's what happens with gas when you've pressurized and now you're I could have done that better <laughs> Now that I'm saying it like that I think my analogy sucked <laughs> Whatever you got my point and if you didn't you do now um yeah so yeah, you're you're not trapping as much gas with the S version. Well, you know, it's louder. So you go from you go from forty five point nine at the shooter's ear to thirty six point six. You, you're basically dropping a suppression rating category. Yeah, suppression rating category. Now you're dropping you're dropping into the mid thirties. So you're not dropping super low now, but you are dropping a category. Does does that matter to you? Does that matter? Maybe. Now, for a hunting for a hunting rifle, there would seldom be a reason to use the long version. Like if for a long barrel rifle, like I don't know. I mean, if you're shooting like one or two shots, and if and you can do that in a smaller, lighter package and still be in the mid thirties at the ear, that's great for hunters. I mean, that's my opinion on that. That's just a personal opinion, whatever. But what does this silencer compare with really well? Like, I mean, it's the same suppression class as like a Nomad or like an Omega or like a Hyperion K, um, that type of stuff. It's pretty good, dude. Uh, The back pressure is higher, though. It is. And not only does the Omega metric show that, but if you take a look at figure one in the review, check out how it looks. Remember I had you look at figure one in the last review? Look at this one. Different, right? Looks completely different, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Don't even look at the numbers. Look at it. Excuse me. Look at it. Looks completely different. The shape, the whole waveform is different. Why? Why? Because the flow is different. Okay, it looks a lot like a, looks a lot like a Sam and L, Helios QD, Rugged Surge, Thunder Chicken. Different different the silencers are quieter than the pr30s though it looks like them but in in this but 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 those silencers are quieter the pr30s exhibits wave shapes and timing that are similar though in early time what is that showing you the flow is similar yeah But that's the back pressure is similar. Okay, so the flow rate is similar. Yeah. Now don't you know these are these are precision rifle silencers, so you don't really need to worry about that too much. But one thing that is interesting, it is one thing that's interesting about this is what would the subsonic performance of these silence the 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 this the silencer look like? You know, when I see higher back pressure, because this silencer has higher back this this looks like waveforms of these these quieter silencers with higher back pressure but it's not as quiet as them so you got to ask yourself what's it going to look like what's it going to sound like on 300 blackout subsonic you know if you if you look at like let's say hey for example let's go to figure seven scroll down guys all the way yeah figure seven um if you look at the back pressure it is somewhere between the Salmon L and the Salmon TI. Almost the same. Pretty much the same. So you take a Salmon L and this silencer, they're going to restrict flow about the same on your gun. 
And it's and it's actually, you know, it's going to be pretty similar in sound at least at the at the muzzle. Um, I think it's a little shorter, so the it's the 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 origin's closer to your ear. That's why you get a little bit of a lower ear ear suppression rating. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit higher back pressure than the the Sanserco Omega. It's, yeah, it's bigger than Omega. It's you know, longer than Omega, so that makes sense. That makes sense why you're having more back pressure. You're, more, you're trapping more gas. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Lower flow rate than Omega. So, given the baffle design and the size of the silencer, really the flow rate and the sound signature is not surprising. It's not surprising to me, um, and it shouldn't be surprising to you after you saw the review of the L version. Really, uh, the way this would almost scale when you, you lost baffles. Now, I would think, and I don't know this for sure, but I would think, you know, if you put this S version on a little semi auto 300 blackout host, could be cool. Could be. Just adjust your gas for it. I don't know. I have a feeling, I have a feeling it would sound good. I was thinking about that. I have a feeling it would, it would sound for, like for this, you know, now it's not going to be a wizard i don't think but i don't know i like to test it I, I we might be surprised we might be surprised what it does like when i see high back pressure like this i'm like hmm I'm like could that help there are different there are different ways to skin a cat but it could help so yeah i don't know um, I think now one thing, one thing that should be said about these silencers is that they have, they have that universal rear mount. So like the Nomad series from dead air, you're going to be able to use whatever mount you want in the back. Yeah. And that my friends may buy you some utility. Yeah. So if you have a favorite QD mount, you know, for example, there you go. Maybe you mount, maybe you like these cause you get to do that. So yeah, all in all, I am pleased to bring you the data. I am. The silencers sound good. They do. And I do think they are competitive. I do think they're competitive. So it's kind of cool to see a new manufacturer enter the space and go straight to Pew Science for validation. Yeah, that's awesome. So good job, Otter Creek Labs. And Andrew, if you're listening, thank you for trusting Pew Science to perform this work. I am honored. And uh, yeah, I wish you well in your future endeavors. Okay. Let's move into topic three at a time of 52 minutes and 37 seconds. Oh, man, we're making great time. <laughs> oh, just in time for me to lose my mind. Uh, Knight's Armament URX4, so fun to install one of these guys. Oh, I highly recommend you do it with your children in the room. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> no, I'm going to tell you a little story. I did it. I did. Okay, look, we don't need to go deep into this. I'm not, just because, frankly, I value my sanity. But here's what you need to do. I'm going to give you, here's, okay, here's what we do. I'm going to give you step-by-step instructions. Right now on this podcast, I'm going to get a drink of water. Uh, uh, Disclaimer, especially tonight's armament, if you're listening to this. Disclaimer. Uh, these instructions do not in any way supersede the official instructions that come with the Knight's Armament URX4 rail. Uh, anybody listening to this should disavow any advice and knowledge that I am <laughs> providing. I'm not responsible for damage um, or injury. <laughs> okay, that's my <laughs> disclaimer. Step one, read instructions. Okay, you ready? You done it? Okay, step two, stop. Go back to step one. And read the instructions again. <laughs> okay, step three, get a beer. Don't get an IPA, though. Get a real beer, okay? Okay, now step four, take a deep breath, follow the instructions, use the shims, all right? You don't need to use the black shim if you don't want to, but you might have to, okay? So just just know, going in, just know that you you're, you don't have to use the black shim, but you may have to, okay? And you're, this isn't going to make sense to you unless you do it. So just there's a hint. Now figure it out, all right? Now once you have the barrel in the upper, okay? Once you have the barrel in the upper and the hand guard hand tight with those shims, you need to torque it, okay? And it comes with a tool. You torque it now. If you can get close to the torque spec boundaries and be top dead center, 
congratulations, you have the correct shims. Now, if not, do some math. Change the shims and get it right. Okay, good job. Now the hard part starts. Okay, good job. You're not out of the woods yet. Now the hard part starts. Get another beer. <laughs> okay, step five. Step five, pin your gas tube to your gas block. Okay, without the gas block installed, don't you put that gas block on that barrel yet. Oh, and if you, if you did already, you get it off. And if you already put the handguard on, well, <laughs> you're skipping ahead. You didn't, you didn't follow step one or two. <laughs> you see how this could go wrong? <laughs> okay, pin your gas tube to your gas block without the gas block installed. Okay, now set it aside. Don't even touch it. Okay, now what I want you to do, step six. Now listen very carefully. Step six, get a PVC pipe with an inside diameter bigger than your barrel shoulder. You, and and you, what well, you say, Jay, I don't, I don't have a the right size PVC pipe. Okay, well, if you're not lazy, go to the store and buy one. Okay. If you're lazy like me, <laughs> drill one to make the, uh, the inner diameter bigger. Make the ID bigger. <laughs> Be a man. Okay. Step seven. Get a Dremel. Hear me out. <laughs> or another cutting tool. Okay, just don't cut your fingers off. Put, your, put on your safety glasses. Okay, now figure out where you need to notch the end of that PVC pipe such that when you put it over the barrel... It can push the gas block onto the gas journal, and if you turn the pipe clockwise or counterclockwise, it'll be able to rotate the gas block. You see what I mean by notching it? So that's what you're doing in the previous step. You're going to be notching your PVC pipe so that you can rotate your gas block on the barrel without having to have your hand in there because the handguard is going to be on there. Understand? So you're creating a third hand with your PVC pipe. Okay, so your PVC pipe needs to be able to fit over to push the gas block in, but also it needs to be able to rotate to turn the gas block to adjust it right. Okay, now there's another thing you got to do. Now, now, if you're smart, you, you can combine this. When you notch it, make, make sure that one of your tabs is notched enough to where you can use that tab to go through the M-lock slot on the side and push the gas block off of the barrel if you have to because you're going to mess up and you're going to put it too you're going to put it on too far cuz you know you have to put it on and, and leave a 0.025 inch gap which is like the mill spec like for a lot of these right okay okay to, to, i'm talking about to align your port okay all right clear as mud all right drink some beer okay now step 8 and here's the thing this step depends on whether or not you use a clamp-on block or a pin block or however you install your gas block. But here, here, here's what I did with a clamp-on block. Now, I torqued that rail like 11 o'clock, right? Assuming I had the right correct shims and I knew that I could get it all the way in the, in, within the torque spec, right? Okay, now then I used my PVC pipe to put on the gas block. Okay, I used my PVC pipe to put on the gas block and I eyeballed it knowing that I need to be about 0.025 inches away from the journal shoulder and the fax and barrel had a little groove to show that so I was like oh, I'm gonna call that good <laughs> there's probably a better way to do this figure it out you can figure that out now I tightened the screws through the m-lock slot because I was at like 11 o'clock right so the m-lock slot was still lining up I used the little thingy I tightened those then I torqued the, the rail the rest of the way boom done done yeah. Um, helpful hints. Helpful hints. Um, aligning it and getting it perfect is a pain in the butt, dude. It is. But because of your handy PVC pipe, you will be able to fix it if you mess up. Okay, so go slow. I have faith in you. You can do this. Now, if you have if you have a pin block instead, it could be easier, maybe. I don't know. Just the M lock slots help. They do. Note that the, the PVC pipe is mandatory, though. It is. Like, I don't know how you're going to do it without that, unless you have some kind of other thing. I, I would highly recommend a PVC pipe. It's not going to scratch your stuff, and it's going to work, theoretically.
Okay. I I don't I don't, I honestly don't know what you do with that one. You'd have to do something weird. So yeah. Now initial impressions. Initial impressions. Um, slim. Sexy. Light. Uh, easy to grip. Comfortable. Very Gucci. Very fancy. Negatives. Negatives. Uh, M lock. I guess. I mean, some people like M lock. I think it's okay. I'm not really the the biggest M lock fan. Um, I I like the Picatinny. Like I like the 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 the, 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 the normal rails there on the side. I do. I want to see. I want to Google something really quick. Why not? Pull something up. When was M lock invented? I don't even know. Oh, okay, interesting. They they started designing it in two thousand seven, but it was two thousand fourteen before they came out with it. Okay, sounds about right. Interesting. Interesting. Huh. Yeah. See the Picatinny. What one did the Picatinny? I, well, I guess you would. Uh, I guess you you would if you want to be technically correct. You'd call it the nineteen thirteen rail, wouldn't you? When did the 1913 rail start? Oh, wow. Well, they had the Weaver in the 80s. What was it, the 90s? I'm looking at the, the Wikipedia article here. Oh, nine, mid-90s? No, that makes sense. I like that. Yeah. Give me some Give me some 1913, baby. I don't know. So, yeah. I mean, so far, I don't know. Um, I, like a, I like a good... 1913. I like a good Picatinny rail. Um, M lock is cool, I guess. Um, this is gonna get hot fast, dude. It. I already know that. Am I gonna get rid of my 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 RAS, my rail adapter system? No, absolutely not. Am I gonna use both and see what I like? Yeah, probably. Have I already bought another EOTech for it? Absolutely. Actually, I bought two EOTechs. <laughs> I'm gonna do that short 300 blackout. You know that one I put, I put the Q rail on it. I've decided I want to actually. I have a smaller Rass. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a rat, smaller rass on 300 blackout. I'm gonna see what that looks like. I know the Q is cool because it's like easy to grip and small, but I was thinking I was like, ooh, maybe I should use a Knight's rail. I don't know. I, something about Picatinny, man, just just feels right. I don't know. So, yeah. So yeah. Um, so I have a bunch of Eotex. Um, so I'm gonna re, I'm gonna revisit I'm gonna revisit that 300 blackout build now that I. No, I, I know I'm going to use the OBC for everything. I'm just using that one lower. I'm just going to be swapping uppers on that one lower. So at this point, I'm like, I'm good, dude. I'm just going to be I'm just gonna be swapping uppers. The next thing I'm going to build is is probably like a 13-something incher for the URX 3.1. Hollow. Yeah, okay. Topic four. <laughs> I hope that helps. I hope that helps you guys. hope that helps your... Um, if you guys are thinking about the URX4, I mean, oh, one thing I really like is that it has the sl the sling swivel uh, QD thing in the rail. I like that. I like those. Okay, topic four at a time of one hour, three minutes, thirty three seconds. I'm gonna sneeze. Oh, bless me! I was gonna hit the pause button. I didn't have time. All right, topic four. <laughs> Thank you to all the Pew Science members for you, your support. Thank you. And welcome to all the new Pew Science members. Man. Consumers, manufacturers, and dealers, shout out to Blake Madigan. He, he is a, a supporting dealer. He is an SOT out of Fort Worth. Um, just a small local guy at the Fort, Fort Worth area. If you're, if you're in the Fort Worth area looking for an SOT, Blake Madigan, he is... He is definitely there, and he is a member of Pew Science, a member dealer, and also uh, Bowie Outfitters down in Louisiana. It's amazing. It really does help, uh, you know, when these folks join, and it is it warms my heart because they're using the data for their for their customers. And so, thank you, thank you all for that. I love it. I love it when the when the smaller SOTs join too. It's like. It's so awesome, dude. It is. And B Bowie Outfitters, it's a really cool. I've been actually, you know, it's a funny story about them. I've been speaking with this gentleman for the past year. 
it seems it almost seems like that it might be less than that i might just be um uh, it might have been for i've been speaking with this guy for a while all he's always nice he always asks questions i answer he's a good guy turns out the data was helping his shop so much that he started using it and even went so far as to use tablets like electronic like tablets in the store with my website to educate cu customers and boy howdy he sent me photos of his stores they have a few of them and wow that's nice man they got like you could it's one of those store dude seriously this bowie outfitters place it's one of those places where you go in you could chill there like have a whiskey and a cigar type of you know what i mean it's like one of those really gucci like uh it's awesome dude um like leather couches and guns looks like my kind of place i would totally hang out in a place like that so if you're in louisiana <laughs> they seem like the dealer to go to man in my opinion i i wouldn't i mean they're pew science dealers so you know they're gonna be shooting you straight when you go in there like they're already a cut above right because you know there's well we don't have to get into the other dealers in louisiana but yeah these guys are awesome they're awesome um, apparently they sell a lot of silencers too. And in, in getting to know the guy over the past few months too, he, he does seem like a good dude would definitely recommend checking out the shops. I think I want to say, I hope I don't butcher this. I know they have three locations, Baton Rouge, uh, is it Natchez, Mississippi? I don't know if, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And in Lake Charles, Louisiana. So they got Baton Rouge, Natchez, Mississippi, and Lake Charles, Louisiana. And I think the Lake Charles place just opened this week and it's pretty big. And I think that they got silencer shop kiosks in Baton Rouge and the Natchez place. And uh, I think Lake Charles probably doesn't have their SOT yet. But when they get that, they probably have a kiosk too. <laughs> so how cool is that, man? It's like, yeah, that's like a that's like a fully featured outdoor store, dude. Like they don't only sell like silencers. And guns, like they sell, like I don't know, pants and like kayaks and stuff, or whatever, like a like a Cabela's. You know what I mean? It's like one of those. It's like one of those type of things. So that's crazy, dude. Like Pew Science on tablets in a store with with uh, leather couches, bro. I feel like that's important. I feel like that's a big deal. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, can, can, the community is using Pew Science data, helping customers and uh, spreading nationwide. Down to the swamp land there, Louisiana. <laughs> That's not true. It's not swamp land. It's a little bit, well, it's getting close there. <laughs> so if you're in Louisiana or Mississippi uh, and you have uh, three Pew Science dealer locations to frequent and support there, the Bowie Outfitters. If you're in Fort Worth, go up to see uh, Mr. Blake Madigan there. Yeah. And they're, you know, if you go, go to the, uh, Give them some love. If you you know, there's links to the to um, the Bowie Outfitters website there on Pew, the Pew Science RFQ, the request for quote page there on the website. Yeah, they have a, put a Bowie Outfitter uh, logo on there, and uh, you can click on go see what their website's about. Uh, I I clicked on the website. I haven't really browsed it much, but I think they have that going. So yeah, so check them out. So thank you so much for you, your support. I hope this in, this episode was informative to, for everyone. I hope you saw some stuff you wouldn't normally see. I hope I hope it's kind of cool to see how the Form 1 community could evolve all the way into a Form 4 company, used what they learned, used a tried and true uh, baffle design, tweaked a little bit, and made their own silencers, and they're super quiet. Isn't that crazy? I thought that was crazy. So with that, my friends... Thank you for listening, and I will talk with you folks again soon. Bye.